Hi, my name is Taylor Gibson, and I'm here with Melissa Darrison. Hello. And Ryman Sato. Hello, everybody. Yeah, we're here for Odyssey of Fire, which is a future book series and a future television series that will probably be on either Netflix or one of those streaming services. Beautiful. I, I really like the concept behind. Uh, I really like the concept behind the uh, the the script that I have that I have read with the whole um, the way that the way that through darkness we can get to light through strife we can get to you know something something much uh, much better than we had. I love I love the concept. Oh, thanks. Yeah. So, by the way, this is, our, this is my first podcast. Mine as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Same here. <laughs> yeah, Odyssey of Fire, for those watching, is a fantasy sci-fi epic with themes of existentialism, spirituality, and political commentary. The story is about a young woman named Suey Osborne and her companion, George Goodwill, who are forced into serving an empire that spans across multiple universes known as Luke's Invicta. Now, Luke's Invicta's goal is to stamp out another empire known as Exidius, who are hell-bent on destroying them and destroying all existence to bring about a new era. They're very different politically, and the leader of Exidius, Phasian, is trying to convert Sui to his cause. Throughout their journey, Sui and George learn to like each other. They make new allies along the way and have to fight their way through enemies and obstacles from both sides to finally get to the throne where Phasian sits and stop him from reaching his goal of cosmic destruction. So it, it's, it's basically kind of like the, the, little, the, the little people getting together and fighting something that is much greater than they, would have, they could have imagined. Or... Yeah, it's about little people joining, a, like the big people are, you know, they're giving them support, the, you know, Sui and these other people that are, that are just joining. They're giving them support in order to fight their enemy. They're on the same path, you know, they're on the same of the same cause, trying to save the the universe, pretty much. Right, right. Well, it it starts. It starts. It's it always starts with a with a with a very small seed, right? It always starts with the with, with the seed. The the power that the little people, or you know, we of lesser gods have, you know, um, is is something that when when coming together is is something that even the powers, the master, the the people with the master plan end up not having a plan for that, you know, like (laughs) when you're talking about that, it sounds like what's going on with current events. So to like put that into a fantasy like scenario, it allows for you to like talk about these issues in a more palatable way for some people because, you know, there's still a lot of stigma and, you know, resistance to Mm -hmm. having conversations about change and you know resisting you know discrimination and all of that and political oppression and so it's it's fun to be able to and important to to talk about the issues but you're doing it in a way that it's disguised as a fantasy epic which i think is just so great and so relevant it very yeah i I see the I see the links as well the 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 parallelisms that you know like uh, I've always seen how like science fiction or or fantasy becomes like science fact or or, or reality. Well, yeah, you uh, look yeah. at any any sort of fantasy epic, and there are the over you know the overtones of political uprising, like The Hunger Games and Star Wars, and you know there you could name uh, so many that. You know these these reach a, a young audience, an old audience, an audience all in between, and you know yeah. you don't realize that you're having conversations about fascism and you know uprising from an oppressive <laughs> yeah. government, and you know like it, yeah. it's just it's yeah. the empire and it's Darth Vader, and you know like it's it's not you know it's yeah. not it's it's yeah. palatable it, it's conversation. Not far from yeah, the truth. exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's it, it's not far from the truth. The way that uh, 
uh, or, you know, of, of the reality, the way that, that these uh, themes, uh, you know, like it, something that I was thinking about just, you know, uh, like a couple of weeks ago was how like our gods and how they became their personifications of concepts. Right. Hey. And then yeah. these concepts, uh, these concepts turn into into dogma or law. Yeah. As, as they did back, back in the day, you know, because the government of those times were the temples and the religious uh, figureheads and stuff. So these concepts became gods, the gods became dogma, and then all of a sudden it turns into oppressive systems because, of course, there's that the human inherent want to control other mm -hmm. things, you know. And then all of a sudden, boop, here we go. And, and, and a story or a concept just, you know, became reality. You know, put, putting that, but then into our, as as it is today, and then how these uh, draconic uh, systems, which can be, you know, the, the concept remains, the concept will always remain, and how, you know, all of a sudden, hey, you know, like it's a, it's a super, it's a super duper galactic, uh, this or that or the other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But they are still very relevant, and I and and that's another thing I love about your concept, Taylor, or or, or this this um, Odyssey of Fire, which is just has that beauty, has that has that relevance. Yeah, yeah. I draw a lot upon myth and politics and all all sorts of things, real life events and things like that because i in the hu essence of humanity because it's it's really important to show all that in in something as big as this or as you know as big of a story as this it is a grand concept scheme maybe yeah um, if that's the right word but drawing from all of your influences drawing from all of 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 what you have encountered in your in in your life as you know the, the different things it it's grand so it's going to uh it, it it takes a lot to to bring something like that together in written form or to uh, whatever medium it is that you're using right um yeah the, the tv the books you know the written word the spoken word and the way that uh you know like there's it's it's a grand it's a grand plan, you know, so, right. so you, you need to draw from, from all of these, of, of these things to make it come together in a concise and, and such a beautiful way. Yeah. A lot of it, a lot of my stuff comes from reading about things or just in being, um, you know, meditating and being inspired by what I feel. Right. And personal experiences I've had, and have you know I, i've heard from other people's experiences and you know i understand a lot of um emotion and stuff from things that i've witnessed and experienced and i i try i try, try to channel that into my work if you have like two two characters that are they they have a close bond like i have i've had many close bonds with a lot of my friends and those like intimate moments mm. you know whenever you just want to hug that person and hold them mm -hmm. yeah i know that feeling and i i like to in writing and, and eventually when i make the show like i really want to capture that in cinematic form and not just the image of it but the feeling which right all comes together through like music and and the way it's lit and the and the cinematography the, you know if the camera's moving it's more impactful absolutely yeah we uh it's it's very important to bring out that spirituality as well it goes into the existentialism of it like exidius is the not are the nihilists it's the way that their politics work. It's it's similar to, it's it's kind of similar to our like American politics. Like Exidius is, is kind of reminiscent of Republicans, or like radical Republicans, and hmm. looks like is reminiscent of radical and and systematic Democrats. Like you know the Democrats that are in charge and stuff. And they, the problem is with with them is that they think they. Like the the big older generation of Democrats, they think 
they know what what they they try the same thing over and over again and I, it always doesn't work mm. and that's a lot of what luke's and vict is like and you know then you have the radical republicans or the exidious and they're 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 they believe in nationalism and and they're they're an empire that their sole purpose is to um keep like in the 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 weird thing about them, they don't conquer. They're, they're not an empire that conquers. Luke's Invicta is an empire that conquers and tries to unify and through through peaceful or, or even not so peaceful methods. Well, even, yeah. It tries even... to protect uh, nationalistic countries and nations and planets. And they're kind of like a, a protector of those people they they believe in individuality of things even if those even if those laws and ideologies are like evil you know um and you know that's the and the thing is that both sides have things good about them in terms of you know in terms of Luke's and Victor and Exidius and um both of them have very bad things you know right i think that's important right. to see the you know the regardless of what side they're on because obviously we have the heroes and we have the villains because you know an epic requires right. that but i think it's important to see you know that there is a, a gray area you know and i think that's something right. that we forget a lot as you know humans is that there's there's a lot of gray in the world and it's not, it's not so divisive as, you know, we may think it is. And it, yeah, it's important to remember that. And I think that that's important to include in something like this, where you're talking about spirituality and politics and, you know, all of the different, you know, very dividing concepts to throw some gray in there. So I think it's, it's a really great uh, concept, and I think that you know it's gonna it's gonna reach a lot of people in a way that you know a lot of fantasy epics have already. Hmm. You know, I I really like the names that you use as well, like For the uh, characters or the uh, the looks oh. looks in Victor. Oh they're, yeah, they're, yeah, and Exidius, a... and like there's all this like very cool like brand new term analogy and it's it's very cool to to see because that's that's not easy to do mm, yeah and, and the concept just... that these names also portray like um uh looks in victor which would it, it, to my perception means the light mm -hmm. unconquered the unconquered light um right there's a there's a local band called Animus Invicta, which means the the unconquered soul. So as soon as I was reading these these names and stuff like this, I I had a personal connection to it, you know. <laughs> right. Yeah. That, and and Exidius is um is uh it's actually my the way I intended it. It's a mix between the words Exodus and uh, and Insidious. That's so cool. Yeah, <laughs> I love the play on words. <laughs> That's great. That's yeah, yeah. Uh, what, what about the characters though? Like, um, like for example, Lothax. Um, what, what, what's up with him? So Lothax is, um, he's like, he's like a, a minor character. Like he plays an important role, um, for like one part of the book. And he like he's he's relate he's he's best friends with like one of the characters that comes in later named Fenya. But Lofax is actually a general of Luke's Invicta. And the the place I got his name is actually I didn't make up his name. Uh, that is the name of one of my friends. That's his like D and D name, and it's kind of that's just like an homage to to him like a thing between me and him and 
you know, if he said, I asked him if I could use that name, and he's like, sure. Oh, that's great. Do you, or any of the other characters, homages Grace. to friends, or? I, I don't think so. I think all of them are, well, one of them was, Venya was suggested by another friend. Um, the thing with, uh, Fajian, Fajian is actually, um, Fajian is the main villain of the, of the first book. Okay. The leader of Exidius. And he is, um, his name is, uh, is similar to Fajian or Fajian, which is, um, which is, uh, I think either Mandarin or I think it's Mandarin for, um, or uh, amorphous because he's a shapeshifter yeah. great band name by the way too. There's, <laughs> a <band called> Am- <laughs> there's a band called amorphous and it, oh, really? it, it in ta- yeah it's I, one of one of my greatest influences musically is actually this uh this band amorphous and as as the name entails they went through many different incarnations or uh sound styles and stuff yeah so, yeah it, it's very very appropriate yeah, fitting they started name. off as a yeah super fitting they started Ooh. off as like a doom death metal band and then all of a sudden they moved on to like the the, the album after that they did like it was still some doom and or some death metal elements in it and stuff and then the next album after that there was a, it was like a modern day pink floyd just like weird uh things yeah know? but uh very very um very fitting so yeah uh I, amorphous it's a tangent my bad <laughs> well that's cool though I, I i'll have to look into maybe having them do something for odyssey of fire musically mm-hmm. that would be, cool. be nice <laughs> yeah. that's another thing with the when it comes to the music for odyssey of fire i plan on having a wide variety of different styles and genres depending on the situation right right some i want to um and and i'm talking about like non-diagenic music so it's not like it it exists within the world um but i was thinking you know getting licenses to use um certain other songs that that have a like a a universal meaning you know like love songs like i'm trying like there's like so many songs i've thought about using um like uh what's the name of it it's like saturn by the name of the band escapes me that that's really it's it's about um how when we die you know there's always something beyond you know even you, know, you just have to you it's good to like believe yeah in that. that sounds very related to um I'm actually... your your concept which i think would be great to pick music yeah. that you know can parallel you know the deeper themes yeah. yeah, that's something that's I don't want to spoil anything, but um, there is a there you know there's there's th- there's part- times when certain people die and you know people they the characters have to deal with the fact you know they're they're questioning um, whether or not there's an afterlife and you know that's a major. Thing. like you can't be 100 percent certain it all comes down to faith i yeah. think is when it comes to spirituality to me i think i don't think like organized religion necessarily works at least not for me like i in my opinion like spirituality is such a deep personal thing yeah, uh, it's, yeah. it's like having to go somewhere to talk about a belief you know you're are are you just agreeing with what someone else believes you know the pastor believes or are you believing what you feel you know yeah 
it should always I, I think it should always be a feeling thing well it's interesting because like there is so much you know discord about organized religion and you know the concepts and you know we all need to agree or we can't agree or this or that and the other <laughs> and you know what's interesting about it is that it really all is very personal and it I mean, personally, it's like if nobody's hurting themselves or other people, then why do you care what somebody else believes in and what comforts somebody else? And, you know, it, right. it, yeah. it's like you said, it's very personal. And, you know, it's people should be allowed to believe in what they believe in and as long as there isn't violence or, yeah. you know, anger That's why and I think hate, then, you know. If it brings people yeah. comfort, there shouldn't be a problem with it. Yeah, people should believe what they want, not what they're told. You know? Yeah. 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 I, the, the way I, I look at it with with the modern day religions, because you know, so many religions have become extinct through the course of through, uh, through the course of time. Mm -hmm. All these different religions mm -hmm. have have become extinct. Uh, but we have the remnants of them, and it seems to me like they had been. That it's a universal truth that is felt in the animus or is felt in the soul. It's a universal truth that we all hold, um, and then through life, it beating you down or or you know whatever whatever situations you have been put in or have put yourself in you become these these ideas become or let, let's go with evil ideas become more ingrained in you uh, yeah. or or you know you like to i love i love the way that religion can bring us together you know an organized yeah. can bring us together but then in that togetherness there's the wall yeah that you yourself put up you know and it's like well that wasn't that wasn't the that wasn't the universal truth that we all understood as children um because i i believe children have sight beyond sight you know like oh yeah <laughs> children are so wise and so beyond anything that adults could conceptualize like we lose some of that in growing up and i think that some people hold on to it for longer than others and some people never lose it um but it's i think that it's important to be connected to your younger self and you know not let some of that magic die which i think is why so many people like are gravitate towards these fantasy epics and you know, because it brings yeah. that sense of wonder and that just so, you know, un like just boundful, like just belief and just right. the, that pure of heart kind of intention. Yeah. 